A good way to graph anything you're not completely sure about is with a table of values. We could pick any values of x, but let's start with ones that are small and close to zero and see what happens with them. And then we can take more from there uh, to develop what our graph looks like. If I put negative two into this equation, then I'm gonna get y is equal to negative one half. If I put in negative one, I get negative one. I'm gonna skip zero for a second. If I put in one, I get one. And if I put in two, I get one half. So now I've graphed all the values which correspond to these x, y pairs. For example, negative two, one half, we can see over here. But with those four points, it doesn't really give us that much of an idea of what's going on. Returning to the value of zero, one over zero is going to be undefined. Anything divided by zero is not a defined mathematical operation. So that's not really gonna help us either. So let's pick a few more values and see if we can get a better idea what's going on. I'm gonna concentrate on positive numbers for now. Let's try two new points. If I try three and four, respectively, one over three is one third, and one over four is one fourth. So you'll notice here I'm getting smaller and smaller fractions. This is hard to do precisely on the graph, but it's gonna look something like this, getting closer and closer, smaller and smaller fractions, getting close to zero, but never quite getting there. Now, what I wanna know is what's gonna happen in this area when I have numbers that are less than one, but more than zero, uh, to try to fill out the, the overall picture of this graph. So if we explore the values one half and one third, let's think about this, one, over one half. That's like one divided by one half and division of course is multiplication by the reciprocal. Um, another way of saying it is it'll be the inverse of one half or two. Likewise one third would be three and so on. One fourth would be four. So what's going on here is it's actually going up as it gets closer to zero. Now we're starting to see a pattern. When it gets very close to zero it's going to uh, be a high y value. And as the x value gets higher, the y gets close to zero. So it kind of is gonna be a little bit of a curve. I'll try to draw this, but it's difficult to draw straight here. Um, the curve is going to look something, oops, shouldn't actually dip below, but that's basically what it's going to look like. And we can see the negative, we're gonna have the same type of pattern. If I were to do negative one half, that would give me negative two, et cetera. So it's basically gonna be like a mirror image and it's going to look something like this. So basically what I did here, although my graph is imperfect, is I looked at uh, what value I got by plugging in different values of X and then trying to find the patterns. When the original numbers that I tried to plug in didn't give me enough information, I looked at the graph and I thought, well, where am I missing information from? And I plugged in the three, the four, and then the one half and one third. So that part does take a little bit of judgment, but this gives you an idea of the graph of y equals one over x. Last thing I will remind you that the zero that's actually undefined. So it has, it's a missing spot essentially on our graph defined by what we call an asymptote, but I'll save that for another time. Thank you.